So here's a confession for you. I fucked up. And today, I'm gonna have to deal with that fuck up and possibly destroy this Kawasaki ZX-6. Back in 2021, I wound up with this 1994 Ninja after it had been sitting abandoned in a neighbor's yard for somewhere between 12 and 15 years. I let it sit outside in my yard for another year and in 2022, I finally took it apart to see if I could get it to run or if I should scrap it. If you watch these videos, you know that I should have scrapped it, having spent more than $3,000 in parts alone just to get it at its present state. And once insured and on the road, I found a problem with this bike that I didn't see when I was working on it here on the hoist. The second gear on this bike is gone, and it just grinds and shakes once you put it under load. Otherwise, the bike is pretty flawless, having pretty much everything else rebuilt on it. And if you can overlook the inconvenience of not having a second gear, the bike is a pretty peppy and comfortable commuter with some longish highway legs that makes riding this bike, despite it being 30 years old, quite a hoot. Now, sure, I should have caught this problem a lot sooner. But when I ran this bike up through the gears, once I got the engine running here on the hoist, I didn't discover this issue. It's only when there's a load on the bike, like I'm doing here by applying the back brake, that the problem is evident. Now, if you're looking at one of these ancient warriors of a street bike for yourself, you may want to just start the bike up, shift it through the gears, and slip the clutch in each gear to see if the bike has any shaking or shuddering or grinding noise coming from the transmission. Just a word to the wise before you part with your own hard-earned cash. My fate, however, is sealed, and the only way out of my present fiasco is to replace the damaged parts, maybe find a used transmission or even a complete used engine out there and swap it into the bike. But for right now, we need to open up the transmission and find out where my second gear went. I suspect it's laying in the oil pan. Now, second gear failure on a motorcycle is not as uncommon as you might think. A typical motorcycle transmission has two shafts in it. One of them is connected to the engine through the clutch. The other connected to the rear wheel, in this case, via a chain. Now, these shafts hold a series of straight cut gears that transfer both power and load to each other. <laughs> Unfortunately, the only way to get to these gears is to remove the engine and take most of it apart. So keep watching, and I'm sure we're both going to learn something. I'm Rod. And this is the first big project of 2024 on Rod Rides and Wrenches. Obviously, if we're going to split the cases on this bike, the engine has to come out of the frame. Now, it's not a horrible job, just time consuming, so I'm going to speed things up a bit for you. Of course, all of the oil and coolant needs to be drained and stored. I just flush the coolant, so I'm going to save that and reuse it later. While the engine is still in the frame, I'm going to strip the clutch, stator, and oil cooler off since they need to be out of the way when we split the case. Once out, I also remove the water pump, which I'll rebuild on an upcoming video. Video. This version of the ZX-6 and ZZR-600 use additional frame spurs that extend across both sides of the engine, as well as down to the front engine mounts from just a little bit back of the steering neck in the frame. And say it with me! Beefcake! 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 These additional supports can make removing the engine much more difficult than, say, your average inline four-cylinder. So we're just about ready to take the engine out of the frame. Uh, all of the engine mounts are loosened off. Luckily, none of them were seized. I uh, got pretty lucky there. Was really worried that the pins that extend through the engine uh, in two places here in the back at the bottom and up here at the top uh, would seize or corrode in place against the aluminum, but that hasn't happened. So we're lucky there. There are two more mounts up front. Uh, one of these pins on each side that are threaded into a nut, those came off uh, fairly easily as well. So we are good to go. All of the electrical systems are disconnected. As you can see that we've removed a lot of the components on the engine already. Uh, had to take the uh, timing cover off and remove the, uh, the pickup, which was down here. And that's because the case actually splits right along this middle line right here. Carburetors sitting up there on the handlebars, uh, zip tied out of place. So again, we've got a lot of work done. Uh, uh, and we're just 
all blocked up here, ready to lower this engine out of the cradle of the frame, and then we can really start to work on it. There are four pins holding the engine in the frame, and the Kawasaki manual suggests tilting the bike to the left to help maneuver it out of the frame. Now, I was pretty much able to lower the engine straight down after removing the lower coolant water pipe and the shift rod to gain some additional clearance. The biggest issue I faced here was only having my left arm at full strength, since a few minutes prior to this video, my right rotator cuff was surgically repaired, and I'm not supposed to be lifting anything, so don't tell my doctor. So the engine is out of the bike, it's sitting up here on the hoist and I've got a, a stand that I put together in order to help hold the engine. It allows me to rotate the engine back and forth and that's going to make splitting the cases a lot easier. Uh, there's a couple more things that I need to do before I actually get down to that. First off is to remove the starter so I can access the bolts that are underneath that starter. Uh, the manual is also calling for the uh, water pumps and the oil pump to be removed and we have to remove the uh, oil pickup screen in the uh, down in the in the oil sump uh, as well as a return tube that goes all the way up to the uh, cylinder head. So those are the things you're going to see in the next few minutes thanks to video time lapse. Of course in removing the two dozen or so bolts that hold these cases together I missed one that was tucked down on the right side of the engine. Those are all out. Oh wait I missed one right there. Son of a bitch. But with this last bolt out of the way, the case should split apart. Look at that. Another one. Now, Kawasaki actually gives you pry points on the block to make sure that they come apart with relatively little effort. So now this is neutral. You see I'm holding the output shaft, spinning the input shaft. Everything's good. That's first gear. Now I can't hold that shaft anymore. It has to spin when the input shaft spins. Neutral again. Second gear. Second gear is where we're having our problems. And you see, basically you see this gear slide into here. Just to carry on. That would be third. You see this became disengaged. That would be fourth. Fifth. And that's sixth in all of our gears. So sixth gear, fifth gear seems to be okay. Fourth gear, third gear. But the one that gives us the grief, second gear, which consists of this gear sliding into here. With the cases split, you can see the transmission shift through the gears, and at first look, it's difficult to see anything wrong with our second gear. Now, that is until the gears are removed from the output shaft and the shift fork inspected, then the problem and subsequent damage become much more clear. So here are the issues that have caused my second gear problem. And the first is this guy right here, which is the shift drum. This cylinder with all these lines machined in it is in direct contact with the shift forks. And the shift forks are what move the gears around in the transmission. The problem with this particular drum is that where it meets up with the shift fork to move second gear, it's actually got a chipped off area or a machine flat spot. This means is that this drum can't properly engage second gear. So the second problem that we have is the shift fork. And it's this guy right here. And although it looks straight, it doesn't appear to be bent just yet. Uh, we can obviously see that it is worn where it was pressing up against the output gear, which engages into second. Here's what the other output shaft fork looked like. And when you compare it to the damaged one, you can see there's really no point in putting this back in the bike. I'm just going to replace it with a new one. So the next problem is actually the root cause, and that is the physical second gear. And this gear, which slides on the output shaft, which engages into second and actually transfers power from the input shaft to the output shaft and ultimately your chain and rear wheel. 
So this damaged gear is called the output top gear. And it actually works a little bit like a clutch and transfers power from the input shaft to either second gear or fourth gear by moving back and forth. The good news is, is that none of the teeth on these gears look damaged or have any adverse signs of wear. They all slot into the input shaft gears properly. But if you remember, the problem that I'm having is specifically with second gear. Now, this is because when the bike is in second gear, power is being transmitted through to the output shaft through these top gear dogs, which actually slot into release in second gear. What's happening is that if these two gears are not held together with enough force, the top gear dog backs off and it starts to slip against second gear, causing this awful sound. So both the second gear and top gear need to be changed out on this transmission. The problem with these gears is that for this particular year of ZX6 or ZZR600, these gears are no longer available. So there are updates to the transmission in 1996 and some 1995 models where these gears have changed. And so what I've decided to do after confirming that the shafts, the shift forks, the shift drum are all exactly the same is to order these updated gears and hopefully I can just put them into this transmission, but I don't know for sure. Now, all I have to do is wait for these parts to arrive before I can start putting this transmission and bike back together. Here's a quick list of all of the parts that I'm changing out. And although I was able to source some of these parts in North America, primarily, I was able to get them more economically directly from Japan. Now, the ZX-6 and ZZR-600 were not sold in Japan in this particular year. What was offered in Japan was its smaller brother, which was the ZZR400. So the ZZR400 was the bike to own in Japan and 90, 95% of its parts are exactly the same as what you'd find in a ZX6 or ZZR600, like our transmission here. And fortunately, a lot of those parts are still available from Japan. Check out these new Rod Rides and Wrenches t-shirts. Now you can get one for yourself and support the channel at the same time by going over to bikersrun.com and buying one for yourself, your buddy, your girlfriend, your spouse, and one especially for your mom. 100% of the proceeds go to support the channel and you get something cool to wear in exchange. So if you want to help out with this money pit of a build and a few more upcoming ones, get over to bikersrun.com and pick one up. So here's a quick update before we go. Uh, the new gears have arrived from Japan. And if we take a look at the gears that are coming out of this transmission, and compare them to the new gears, I can say that the 1995 and later gears are certainly much heavier than the ones that are coming out of this bike. The bad news is, is that the number of dogs that are on the gears on either side is different. This old gear actually uses six dogs that go around the outside of it on either side to engage either second gear or fourth gear. And the new one has only five dogs, although they're much thicker. So my plan to just swap these new gears into this transmission is going to work. So the solution, well, that's going to be to find a 1995 to 2004 ZX6 transmission and swap the balance of the gears on the output shaft over to this one. Now, luckily, I already have a brand new second gear and brand new top gear. So I'll integrate those components just to make sure that I wasn't buying somebody else's problem. I did find a cheap used transmission on eBay, and even though the seller had good photos, I sent him photos of my transmission damaged and asked him to compare to what he had. He assured me that the transmission is not damaged and was fully functional. Like I said, I already have a brand new second gear and top gear. I've also purchased a new shift drum and shift fork, and the ZX6 or ZZR600 transmission wasn't known for having any other transmission issues outside of second gear. At the end of the day, I'm just digging myself a little deeper financial hole, but I can't see any reason to stop since this mass of parts on my bench really is worth nothing. 
Look, I think you figured out that I don't do this work for any fiscally sound reasoning. I do it because I have a passion to see semi-classic bikes like my ZX6 here back out on the road where they should be. Now, I hope you'll stay tuned for the next video when hopefully we put this transmission back together. And until then, be sure to ride safe.